iOS 16.4 is officially available today. You can go ahead and update your iPhone right now. And in this video, we are covering every new feature in iOS 16.4. The first new feature and probably the most popular one is the inclusion of new emojis in 16.4. On your screen now are all of the new emojis included in this update and some of my favorites include the jellyfish, the shaking face, the new colors for the heart emojis which include blue, pink, and gray. We also have a new maracas emoji and also a goose and a moose. So let me know in the comments which new emoji is your favorite. When iOS 16 first came out, Apple introduced a new feature for the wallet application that lets you track all of your orders that you purchased using Apple Pay. And in iOS 16.4, there is now a widget for your home screen that lets you see all of your active orders. To add this to your home screen, simply press and hold and then press the plus icon in the top left. Then scroll down and choose the new wallet widget and you have three different sizes to choose from iOS 16.4 also includes a new update for web applications. When you're in Safari and you add a shortcut to a web app to your home screen, these applications are now able to send you push notifications just as if they were a native app installed on your iPhone. We also have an update for the home application in 16.4. The underlying architecture has been completely overhauled for way more reliable connectivity between all of your smart home devices. This update was previously found in iOS 16.2, however Apple ended up pulling this update due to some issues on the back end. To get this update now in 16.4, open up the home app and then press the menu icon in the top right. Then press on home settings and then software update and from there you're able to upgrade the underlying architecture of your home app. 16.4 also includes two new updates for the podcast application. The first one is an all new up next section when you first launch the application. Inside this up next section, you're gonna see recently added episodes to podcasts that you're following, as well as podcasts that you're currently listening to. The second update in podcasts is an all new channels menu. What this is, is it's a place for brands to list all of their podcasts in the same place. So for example, if you have a favorite creator that you follow, they may have three or four different podcasts and you're able to follow all of their different podcasts in this one unified channels menu. The TV app also gets a very slight update in 16.4. In the up next section, each episode now has a menu button. When you click on this menu button, you have a few different options. You can view the details of the show, you can share that show, you can choose to remove it from up next, and you can also mark that episode as watched. 16.4 also includes an update for the iPhone 14 Pro and it's always on display. You can choose to have the always on display either on or off based on what focus mode you're in. Open up settings and then tap on focus. Then choose the focus mode that you want to edit. So for this example, I'll choose do not disturb and then scroll down and choose focus filters. And in here, you can see we have a new option for always on display. You can choose to have the always on display on or off when you're in this focus mode. We also have a bunch of small UI updates to the Apple Music application in 16.4. First up is when you're in the library tab, you're now going to see your profile picture on the top right hand corner. And also when you click on your songs list, I do believe that the sort icon in the top right has also been updated. And when you go into your playlist, you're going to notice that the artwork preview for each playlist has been made a bit smaller. But probably my favorite part of this entire update to Apple Music is the alerts. Previously in iOS 16.3 and before, whenever you would add a song to your library, you would get that really annoying full screen pop-up. And this would be very, very annoying because you would have to wait for this pop-up to go away before you could add another song to your library. So if you were trying to add a bunch of songs at once, this would get very annoying as you would have to wait for that pop-up to disappear. But now in iOS 16.4, Apple has changed this and whenever you do something like add a song to your library or add it to a playlist, it is way more subtle and it simply appears at the bottom of your screen. This is a fantastic update to Apple Music. iOS 16.4 also introduces the page turn animation back to iOS. When you're reading a book in the books app, tap on the screen and then tap the menu icon in the bottom right hand corner. Then tap on themes and settings and you're going to notice a new button for the page turn animation. You can choose between slide, curl or no animation. 
iOS 16.4 also completely overhauls the way that your iPhone can receive beta updates from Apple. Open up settings and then tap on general and then software update. You'll then see a new option in here that says beta updates. For me, because I am a registered Apple developer, I have three different options. I can choose to turn it off completely. I can choose the developer beta and I can also choose the public beta. If you are not a registered Apple developer, you are only going to see the public beta in this section. iOS 16.4 also gives you the option to have a different Apple ID for the developer beta. This is important because some beta testers have a completely separate Apple ID that they use for beta testing. So they may have a personal Apple ID and then a completely different one for their developer account. So if you have a completely different developer Apple ID, you can enter it in this section of settings. This update to iOS is very important because it completely eliminates the need for beta profiles. So unfortunately, that means that the public is no longer going to be able to install future betas using a developer profile that you find on a sketchy website online. We also have an entire new section in settings that shows your warranty for all of your Apple devices. Tap on general and then about. You'll then notice there's a new section called coverage. Inside here, it's going to show the coverage that you have for your current device and also any of your paired devices that are associated with your Apple ID. So for example, you can see that my iPhone is covered with Apple Care Plus. You can see that my Apple Watch and my AirPods Pro have their limited warranty. And you can also see that some of my other headphones have had their coverage expired. So this is a really nice unified area where you can see all of your warranty and coverage for your devices. And a few very small updates here at the end of the video. For users of the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro, there is an update for emergency SOS via satellite. Your iPhone is now going to tell you a rough estimate of when the next satellite is going to be passing over your location. And there's also an update for people that use the Ukrainian keyboard. Predictive text and quick path is now available for the Ukrainian keyboard. And finally, for those of you in South Korea, Apple Pay is now finally supported in South Korea. So that is everything new in iOS 16.4. It really is a pretty substantial update. So I want you to head down into the comments and tell me what your favorite new feature is in iOS 16.4. After you do that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and also smash that like button. My name is Michael with IDB. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.